Okay, our next session is on mentorship. If you want success, help someone else. The power of media mentorship. Um, and this is uh, if you have any skills that you... Does anybody have any skills that they want to... Anybody skills at all? <laughs> Nobody? No skill. Anybody, does anybody in any need of any skills? <laughs> okay, so a few Always. people, but everybody else knows everything <laughs> or has nothing to offer. <laughs> one of the, I'm not sure, one or the other. Uh, but we do have seats, so come and hang out. Um, I'm Neil Romanek. I'm uh, editorial director at The Flint. Uh, the Flint is a new publication uh, covering sustainability in the media industry from script to distribution. Um, and by sustainability, we mean environment, uh, better ways to work, uh, better ways to make content, and better ways to create a new future that you want to live and work in. Um, come join us at theflint.media. And uh, I'm really excited about this session. I think this is, this is going to be quite a cool session. Um, I have uh, guests here that it, they will introduce themselves, um, but um, this, uh, has been, this session has been sponsored by RISE. Uh, you can go over here and see the RISE booth and talk to uh, some of the representatives from RISE here. RISE are an organization which we'll hear more about um, that do mentorship and um, push diversity uh, across the media industry. Um, would you introduce yourselves and, and sort of tell us what, you're, what you do? Yes. Hi, my name is Andréanne, uh, or Andy, if you speak English. Uh, so I work <laughs> for Ross Video, and I'm a trainer, and also I do demonstration on broadcast equipment. So I've been training for more than eight years there on live production, lots in newsroom and, and all of that. So uh, vision mixing, system automation, so that's what I do. So. Hi everyone, I'm May and I'm an engineer at Creative Technology currently. My background is kind of music and touring mainly, so I've just finished on a tour with Robbie Williams um, and I'm also a current Rise mentee. Great. And my name's Stephen Stewart, so my background's broadcast operations, production, working for things like BBC, Channel 4, Channel 5, um, mainly in the broadcast operations side. Um, currently a Rise mentor and on the advisory board. My mentee is just here, so that's convenient. Um, yes, so that's me. Great. Um, okay, so mentorship. Um, why mentorship? And I guess again, maybe getting the definition of mentorship down is important too. So I guess mentorship is where somebody with knowledge and information and experience passes that on to somebody who doesn't have that, I guess we could say in the most basic sense. Is that right? Yeah, and I think it's not one size fits all. I mean, I've been lucky enough to have I think four or five RISE mentees and the mentoring side of the program for me has been different with all of them. So it's sometimes giving advice and thinking I would, this is how I would do it, sometimes asking questions, sometimes bordering on coaching to say well what do you think you should do etc. And sometimes it's about networks. If people just want to know a bit more about something you say oh I know someone, I'll introduce you to uh, Carla or introduce you to whoever. So it all varies, and it's not a one-way street either. Um, I find that I learn almost as much, if not more, from my mentees as I perhaps impart to them. So I know a lot more about live, live production now, and I have other mentees about virtual production. So uh, it's very much a symbiotic relationship. And then do you want to maybe tell us how you, uh, maybe how you got connected with the Rise Menteeship program in the first place? Yeah, so when I kind of went to apply for the RISE program, I was in a place where I was kind of unfocused in my direction for my career. I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to go or where I was, um, and I didn't really have a lot of leadership in the area that I was working in to help me. So I started looking online to find mentorship opportunities to help me get to where I thought I might want to be and I stumbled across Rise. So it was purely kind of by coincidence that I'd seen Rise and I started following on LinkedIn um, and saw a bit of what they were doing with the Rise Up Academy, which is helping people between 16 and 18 year olds. 
And when I saw the mentorship program, I was like, when that opens, I have to apply. Um, and I did. And at that point, I was like, well, I'm quite technical. I have a lot of knowledge. So it wasn't so much the technical knowledge that I needed, but I needed someone who would help me get to my next, like, like get short-term goals, long-term goals, medium goals, know how I can go through those and step through those bits to get to my next journey. And that's what I needed from my mentorship. So it was amazing then to have my mentor, Stephen, who was able to help me get through that and also work out ways of maybe new areas that I hadn't considered before. Because I think that was another thing that I hadn't thought of. I was looking at one path only, and that one path might not have been the right one for me to go down, but I didn't know any other way. So it kind of opens up opportunities that I didn't think of before. And it's also not a one-way street. So obviously me and Stephen both learn from each other, but also I have an amazing amount of women that are in that cohort too, that I can learn from with past experiences. And I work in a very male-dominated industry. So in the Robbie crew, there was only two women that were technical in about a 40 crew section. You're living on buses and dealing with a lot of sexism across the board. Mm. And within that, I was looking for people who I could also share that experience with. And that's what I found from my mentorship. And it was what I needed. I needed more friends. I needed more support networking. And we're kind of our biggest cheerleaders, really, <laughs> which is amazing. That's great. And, and, and yeah, no, I've, been, I've been nodding because it's really, it's really interesting. And, and I think it's the more, uh, the more viewpoints you have on, even from an outside point of view to you, what you're experiencing, the, the better it broadens your horizon, the, the better you can, you can get the feedback from people. And, and as you mentioned as well, the, the, it's a really male dominated industry. And, and, and this is true. And, and I think every time I'm, I'm training someone on a technical level, um, sometimes I have to prove my knowledge before I even start, or if it's another woman, then we connect instantly because we know what it took us to get there. So I think it's even in a different sense of mentorship, it's maybe like short-term mentorship, but we keep those connections, I think. So it's in, the, in a different sense, yeah. Mm. That's interesting. You were saying that like you were looking for mentorship uh, kind of to start with. So you'd kind of come in there thinking, I need mentorship. What was, what was that process, or why why mentorship? Why wasn't it just like so for I'll me, just read more I, blogs and yeah, <laughs> I wanted to have mentorship from people who weren't directly within my area of work, mainly because sometimes uh, when you're in a position, or I was very stressed at the time, I didn't quite know where I was meant to be going, um, I didn't have a lot of direction. So I was looking for someone that was removed from that, who maybe would have a different outlook across something. And for me, mentorship isn't just one-on-one. -on -one. So it's not just me speaking to Stephen. Um, and we've had amazing chats one-on-one -on -one too about kind of like we've developed a personal development plan for myself. So I was able to actually have written down goals that I knew I could then achieve. Um, but also working with a group of ladies that have also been through things that like I was kind of missing the friendship section of my career. I had all of these amazing experiences. I was traveling the world. I was doing lots of technical things. But then I was also like, where do I go? Where, where do I need to go to then better my career? Where do I need to go to take the next move up? And within the freelance community, that is what you are. So there wasn't any movement upwards. So I had to start looking outwards. And also, when you are in a male-dominated industry, there's not help schemes the same. You're kind of, that's your role. That's what you do. You just get better at it. Whereas I was looking for something that was gender diversity based, which is the whole purpose of RISE. It's to get better gender diversity across the technology sector and also to get younger people looking into this too. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for something that was specific to me rather than me just looking in my business. I already know all those people and I know their expertise. I was looking to broaden my network and find people with different expertise. Mm -hmm. Now, was that the same as you? Were you, were you aware of like their of needing mentorship specifically, or was it you were just kind of looking for? So the I remember when I started working and I wanted to achieve a specific goal, I someone told me, a professor told me, if you look for someone that, that is doing what you want to do and then try to get a contact in all of them. So even if at the moment I started as an assistant uh, on a production and then I wanted to do vision mixing, so... I, when I had some break, I would just go up and, and then I just got introduced to the people and then, and then asked them, could you, could you just show me what you're doing? This is something that I'm really interested in. And then it's, 
it takes a little bit of courage to just go and ask. This was not towards like with a program or anything. This was just like me being full of hope and then trying to just achieve that. And and I'm still in contact with that person. And then when I got my first like vision mixing job, then that person was really like like proud of me. And then like just like making sure that we kept in contact. So so you could achieve that if you if you know already what you want to do. But in in your in your case, this was you are looking for an, an other opinion. So I think that's good to have like different programs as well to just like broaden the horizon, so. I mean, you're talking about that sort of that, uh, you know, as, as women needing to, to find some support, you know. Um, but there's also something interesting in that with I think the cliche is that the men are the ones who would never ask for help, you know, or would never think that, you know what I need? I need someone to help me. It's not necessarily the first thing that would come to mind. So there's an interesting kind of, uh, um, you know, advantage that, you know, that you're able to access there, which the uh, old fellas, like myself, may, may not. How did you need help? Can I help you? Sorry? No, never mind. Um, <laughs> so so, so um, how has it, it been, like, well, again, maybe tell me a bit about how you got involved with Rise to begin with, and then also how you got started in doing the mentorship? Yeah, I think how I got involved in Rise goes actually years back. Um, as, as, a, as part of the problem demographic, being a male in the industry, I was, many years ago, I was working with some amazing female engineers, one in particular, and we were uh, about to commission a virtual, one of the very first virtual studios. And my level of technical knowledge is close to zero. So I was working really closely with this amazing female engineer. And we went off, as you do, to IBC, went around the usual suspects, turned up to the booths. Um, I was there more from a business perspective. I was just interested in what we were going to spend our clients' money on. So I would uh, turn up, and we'd have the normal introductions. Then the engineer um, would ask a question about the such and such camera head, whatever, whatever, in a really technical way. And on one of the stands, the sales person or the technical person would listen to the question from the engineer and then would turn to me and answer the question. And I thought the first time, oh, that's maybe just how they work. And then it kept on going, same old, same old. Got to a point where I had to become more and more dumb and had to literally say to the person on the booth, I don't understand what SDI is, so don't talk to me about this. I, I barely recognize a camera, so I, I had to really, and that brought it home to me. And then we went to another stand that was a competitor com competition to this first stand, and the people on that stand, if I asked a question, they answered me. If the engineer answered, asked a question, they answered her. And the system wasn't quite as good technically, and it wasn't quite as modern, but that's the one we bought because I thought when it goes wrong, and these things do, especially in those days, what I don't want to happen is the engineer rings up the support people and just gets treated that way. And they, oh, we're not gonna to talk to you. Can we talk to the guy who's in charge of the technical? So that was where it sort of the seed for me. And then as I've grown through the industry and seeing amazing women who just are getting overlooked or uh, yeah, just, people like me succeeding when we shouldn't and then women who are equally if not better equipped to do the same job not so that's why I got involved in Rise and I thought if there's anything I can do and I, I like the coaching and mentoring anyway that's my natural sort of management style so it wasn't a, a big scary leap for me um, and then I met the people who uh, started Rise um, and it was a real common theme everyone both male and female there are the majority of the mentors are female but there are some male mentors as well so you you don't have to be for anyone who's thinking about being a mentor you don't have to be female to be a mentor but you have to be uh, able to just understand the situation and problems that the women in the industry are having so that's that's why i got involved and it's a it's a whole new network as, as you said earlier on it's it's given me a, a bunch of people in the audience here who I'd never met, I would have never met before. And from my perspective, actually, from a, in previous companies, I thought, from a recruitment point of view, actually, it's such a powerful cohort 
if I'm looking to hire people, people who've been, been involved in Rise, as mentees in particular, they've almost self-selected um, like, like being that one level above or that one step above. So if somebody's been on the Rise program as an employer, I would look at them and think, oh, they're on the interview list just because you know what Rise is doing. And Rise is sort of snowballing globally now as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, that's uh, one of the things that kind of, a, a, kind of comes to me and, and, and also it's certainly plugs into sustainability um, is this idea of taking time with things um, and then sort of being able to spend time with people and have time to expand your networks. And that I think maybe one of the things that we have in this industry is in a lot of industries, but certainly in this industry is this time crunch where it's like I'm, I have to find somebody for this job by Friday. I'm going to call Bob, you know, uh, because I, you know, I literally have no time to make any other phone calls. So Bob's going to get the job, you know, um, and so to, being able to sort of stretch things out and have space for people to actually have relationships and spend, you know, spending time with each other seems like not just not just a networky thing, but also kind of a different way of, of seeing relationships in the industry. Well, it was really important to me to have a mentor that understood my working schedule because I do work away a huge amount. And I was quite concerned when I started the program because I'd be away for long stretches at a time and working some crazy hours, which we all do in this kind of industry. Um, and Stephen's been amazing at doing that because he will make sure that we do have time. So even in moments where I don't think I do, we're able to kind of include our rise things or we have a quick email exchange or a quick message exchange about how I'm getting on or what I'm doing um, or a quick even a 10 minute Zoom call just to touch base. And it was so important to have someone who understood that part. And I think that's the thing in an industry that doesn't have time. We don't have time for anything, sometimes not even in our own personal lives to have a mentor who's looking out for me, sometimes at times where I might not even be looking out for myself because I'm concentrating on my job, was actually, again, another reason why I wanted mentoring. But also, it shows that actually, if you do spend the time and invest in yourself, you're gonna get so much out of a scheme and it doesn't have to be rise. It doesn't have, it could be in your workplace. It could be anywhere, but you can still use that investment in you to find out new opportunities and new ways of working. Mm. And it comes back to the two-way street. You imagine how great I felt, like somebody middle 50s, saying to friends who I was down the pub with, oh, I've just got to nip out. I'm going to talk to someone backstage at the Robbie Williams concert in Hamburg. <laughs> They're like, what? You're going to do yeah, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and you were sitting there behind some of the screens and we were having a 15-minute mentoring session while some sound check was going on. So it, it is fun as well. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it, like you mentioned, in this fast-paced industry, you can also, even on the technical side, if you want to learn skills or anything, sure, you can take some time to just go and find a resource and then like find some courses and then go to find some tutorials. But if you have a mentor, you can also go straight to the point and say, hey, I need, I need help. I'm going to do this job tomorrow. And I, don't, I have a lot of questions. Can I just like ping you for a moment? Just have a quick chat with you. So having connections in various different places makes you also more efficient because... Yeah, you, you, you want to be able to be up to the job, but then do you have a lot of time to, to spend to learn? We wish we all would have time to spend and, and learn skills, but I think it's important as well to have the connection to, to be able to quickly receive the help when you need it. And the other thing as well is that obviously there's so many online learning courses, so I could go on and learn half my job by being online. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is that it's a minefield. You go out there and there's so much information. Mm -hmm. The good thing about mentoring is that it's tailored to you. It's tailored to how you learn. It's tailored to your personality. When someone else is mentoring you, they can see where you need to be going sometimes better than you can see yourself. So then they can tailor what you need to prioritize and what you need to pick out. So obviously with yours, yours was like a vision mixer, which is where you wanted to go. Mine was more about how I make a career plan. So Stephen was really able to help me in that way, which is something I didn't have in my current job. So it was those kinds of things. It's the personality part of it as well. Like being online, it's not personable. You don't see people. There's no lived responses when you look on a website. Whereas when you're speaking directly to somebody, whether they've done an amazing learning course, whether they've gone online and looked something up and then done a course based on it, it's just having that one-to-one -one reaction or a group reaction where it's lived and it's real, mm. not just looking at a computer screen. 
Yeah, you do have that, that this idea that's sort of drummed into us that you know all I need is like me and an internet connection, and I'm you know great. Don't need anybody. Just me and the screen, and we're good. Um, but you know, being in the same room, not necessarily in the same room, but in the same virtual room with somebody, and you know, uh, it seems like a whole different kind of ball game. Uh, were you about to say something, or were you? Oh no, I thought. No. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I wondered about that. I mean, how how do I find mentorship to begin with? You know, if I'm, uh, I mean, there's rise. Okay, great. But like here I am, and you've had that experience too. Um, of I guess first of all, you have to have that moment of like I need help, and then and then how does a person actually go out and find somebody? So I think for me, that's where I did use the online resources. Um, things like LinkedIn are really helpful because you can search mentorship within that and then things that are related to that do come up and then you can find ones that are related to you. But also you can start where you are. So if you're looking to have mentorship, you can look at your own company, see if they do schemes, see if you can speak to someone within that. I worked for a very small company that didn't, so I knew that I had to look outward to find what I needed. And it, again, it was ma very male-dominated in mind, so I knew I wanted something for gender diversity. So I already knew a little bit about what I wanted out of it. So I think the main thing for me is know what you want, know what you want to get out of that type of mentorship. And being online is your best friend as well as also connecting with other people and networking because there's lots of people who wouldn't know about Rise unless we all spoke about it. So it's one of those things where if your company does do kind of mentorship, let everybody know. Like, why is it a secret? If someone wants to also get mentorship, go and speak to those people as well that might actually be able to help you. So, like, you went and found that for you. So it's about going out and finding almost mm -hmm. what you want and finding the people that can give it. Yeah, and, and unofficially we have, like, I have kind of been, like, mentoring when we have new employees in the company. Uh, when we have, like, new trainers, uh, we, I will, like guide them and, and then it's not like on the technical terms because they are all they're like technically qualified but also on the tips and tricks and how to do that so with my job being a trainer uh, we all know and you spoke about that how there are different types of learning different personality will learn in different ways so that's where I normally will go with the with one of my, my new colleagues and then I will just try to guide them through that because that's not something that's like that you get. So you might be like really good at vision mixing, really good at like producing live graphics, but how to teach and how to communicate to people depending on where they're at, and also teaching adults vary from teaching like any any kids or any children. So it, I think that's like the the it's important to have someone who can also point at you like the things that you're doing good. So keep doing that, and the things that you should try maybe to reinforce. So I think that's yeah. And I think the other thing to note is that we're always learning. So no matter how old you are or no matter whether you're at the beginning of your career, like mentoring isn't a kickstart to a career. You can have it when you're already very, very successful in your career too. But you could be at a crossroads. So there could be something where you just want a little bit more. You want more responsibility or you want someone to take you more seriously for what you're doing. Or you want to be more kind of um, seen, I guess. So like LinkedIn, we do training sessions on LinkedIn. It makes it a lot more seen by everybody. Yeah. And that kind of thing actually then can boost your career because then people come to you for the advice. So it's even that kind of thing. It's about kind of your, your presence almost. Mm. So everyone gets something different out of mentoring. It's not just at the start of your career. It's at any point. And I think I would add, I'd agree completely with all of that, um, two things. A, sometimes for companies, they see mentoring and they see cost. They think, oh, it's going to cost money to do the mentoring. Um, so the first thing is, that has, it doesn't have to be called mentoring internally. Um, if I was going into a company, I would start a buddy scheme for when I do an induction for anyone new joining the company, male or female, just give them a buddy that isn't in their department necessarily. So they, like, where's the best place down the road for coffee? Or what about this? What about that? How do I log on to this? Just give them a buddy. And that's the start of a mentoring scheme. And then the second thing to say is it's the long game. There are people who've been mentors for Rise and other places, or mentees rather, for Rise, who've then gone on to become mentors. And then they've become advocates in their company, working with the HR people. And that's why so many people, I think, sort of enlightened companies, they're sponsoring Rise. Because Rise is free, just in case anyone doesn't know, Rise is free for the mentees. 
and the mentors all give their time for free. So it's a voluntary organization, but there are a lot of costs involved. And some of the big companies you'll see up on the banners, the big companies, the industry sponsor Rise, and they don't do it just because it's a fun thing to do. They get some return on their investment for it. If you speak to any of the sponsors, they will tell you the value they get out of it. Um, and I think for smaller companies, this isn't about May's company in particular, but more generally, if you have a, a bunch of very successful individuals, they tend to get promoted into supervisor roles or manager roles. And sometimes they don't get the training they need. So suddenly you find somebody who's a more junior member of staff who has a line manager who's never been a line manager before. So they don't know how to manage or because they've been an operator, they try and micromanage. So sometimes with um, mentees, one of the problems is how they can help their manager be a better manager. So some of the conversations that we as mentors have with our mentees, they'll say, oh, my manager is doing this. Uh, what do you suggest I do about it? So you can do a bit of role play rehearsals with them. Well, if he's doing this, then try asking him that or try asking him this or try this approach. So it's a safe space to rehearse those sometimes difficult conversations with less experienced managers. Do you see it being um, like something that could that the industry needs in terms of not just, oh, we get the right people in and we upskill them, but um, just a different way of approaching how we work? Yeah, I, I think completely. If I think the whole industry, not, not even just our industry, if everyone learns from everybody's experience, you know what it's like when I joined the industry, I would, I would learn stuff from maybe one or two people. I didn't have a big network. You had to build your own network. Whereas with mentoring, it sort of snowballs. You sort of, like, I know May is a mentee, but then I know May's 25 other cohort mentees. So suddenly I know 25 mm -hmm. people, 25 women in the industry who I otherwise wouldn't know mm -hmm. across different things. So mentoring is more than just the sort of one-on-one -on -one mm. sessions you have. It, it, and I, it's those people that you might not have actually naturally crossed over with. So in my industry, I wouldn't have met some of these ladies unless I'd been with Rise. And all of a sudden, my network is now open to a huge array of other people in different areas, different industries. And like, that's also really important because we're all moving up together. Mm -hmm. So at that point, when we get to the higher areas of our careers, we have a contact here, we have a contact there. And they're, co they're contacts that we wouldn't have had before. And that is what's amazing about Rise itself as well, or going via an organization, because they do have those contacts. Contacts. I'm, I'm now linked to a lot of people from the previous cohorts as well. Mm -hmm. So the network isn't just yours. It's everybody else's and their mentors and then yours before that and their mentors and bit by bit. And it'll, that'll go into the future too. So the next group of people, we'll get to know them as well. Mm -hmm. So bit by bit, you're building this massive network of strong, powerful women within Rise that you can then go to when something you, you might need something for your job or need some advice. And you can see people who've then gone through those patterns that you're now going for yourself. Ask them their advice. And then bit by bit, we're all almost mentoring each other. And as a, my company participates, uh, like does the participation in Rise, and one of my male colleagues, he's a mentor. And I was chatting with another colleague who was asking me, why is a man mentoring some women and, and, and then it opens up the discussion and I said well he has some valuable knowledge and he's a business development manager so he has like some valuable knowledge in the industry and, and I'm like I, this is not a woman only organization and you certainly proved that but it's also opens up the discussion and he's one of like he's a in the higher uh, ranks of the company so then other people can see oh he's mentoring so he's actively participating in changing what he can and then that opens up the rest of the company to say, oh, what is this organization? Can I do anything? And, and, it's, and as you say, we, the, the company invests perhaps time in that, but that the, what, what they return, it, the return is, is far more than that. It's, it's just trying to, to, to achieve a better equality inside of the company as well. And then like anyone is gaining from participating in mentoring and then like all of that specifically with Rise. So. Yeah, I'd completely agree with that. And allyship, if, if ever I could be a role model, I never see myself as a role model in anything, but if I could be a role model for allyship, 
there's a number of guys in the business who, before they knew about Rise, they think, oh, it's Rise. I can't be, I can't be a mentor. I'm a guy. Um, but by me going up there, and one of the founders of Rise is on the board, Andy Beal. He's like, everyone knows Andy. And there's a number of other amazing male mentors. And if we, as allies, can show that, yeah, as a guy, you can do that. And actually, there's a, uh, an award, there's an allyship award as part of the Rise Awards next week. So it'll be really interesting to see some guys getting recognized for the work they do um, alongside the amazing women. So I think that point is really, really yeah. important. Men and women will benefit from more equality and, and, and in all sense, not just gender, but just like equality and then more perspective. It's, it's never a bad thing in any industry, I think, so. Yeah. So then um, if, I'm, if I have something to give away, and we'd all do, whatever, whatever you have, um, you know, how do I do that? How do I, how do I mentor people or how do I <laughs> call people on the street and go, hey, I've got something to tell you? Or, or what are, I well, mean, obviously, would be a bit weird. I could, you can be a rise <laughs> mentor, but, but are there, you know, if I'm, you know, I've never heard of rise, I've, you know, come to the industry, I know that I've heard about that mentorship is a thing. Um, how can we incorporate that into what we do? I mean, what, where do you start with that? I think with mentorship, like you said, it doesn't always have to be under the title mentorship. Mm. So it could even be like at the moment in where I work now, Creative Technology, it's quite a large company. We have a student placement and we also have a very recent graduate who are learning. They're at the beginning of their career. And at that point, you're kind of not mentoring them, but you also are because they're looking to you. I'm an engineer, so I'm a few roles higher than they are at the moment. But you're always training. And even with training, that is mentorship. You're helping them. And whether that's helping them technically or whether that's helping them tackle different things. And um, one of them did say to me, because they, I was discussing with them like how to get through the door. I graduated 10 years ago, and the industry has changed since then. And one of them said that he went to university, and uni gave him the foot in the door, but how does he get through the door? And I think that we can all do a little bit better about helping people through the door. Um, and at that point, it's like, how do we help? And it, he basically said, well, the thing is, is that lots of big companies and small companies have an email address for freelancers. Freelancers email in here. But they don't have an email address for new people entering the industry. So all of a sudden, he's then with kind of thinking, do I enter the freelancers one and put a cheeky email in? No, you don't fit that description, so your CV will never be read by the right person. But why aren't companies making a newbie one? Why aren't they filtering those people? Because when you do need your runners, when you do need those people who are the lower levels, you'll have a pool of people you can speak to who are interested in that industry and your company. But you as companies need to also put yourselves forward. Traineeships and making sure that you're training the next generation of people So mentorship doesn't have to be when you're struggling with something or when you're midway through your career. Mentorship and training go hand in hand, and that can start at any point. But in some ways, the companies also have to be forward-thinking enough to be able to provide that and do that for others. Mm -hmm. So mentor and sharing can help from the very basis of your career. You can have someone who comes in, and then you just take them under your wing, and you show them how the company works. You show them how your journey has started and ended and you just support them in whatever they need. That's also mentorship, but it doesn't need to be under the banner of mentorship because you're still helping. Exactly, it just, it just means to stay open and, and show that you have some bandwidth to take, just to ask if they have any question in the future, in now, you never know when, when they may need your help, but just when you are in contact with someone and if you're sharing some of your knowledge, your experience, just staying open and then let them know that they can approach you if they have any other uh, question. Or if you know someone who you think, oh, you know what, they would, they would have like great answers for you or they could be like a great like ally to you, then just like make the connection and then just try to see a little bit like outside this moment that you're doing, this is training or this is just a, an inco like, yeah, we've just met, but then what, what else could there be? Mm -hmm. um, put questions out to you guys. What do you need to know about mentorship? or mentoring, or being a mentor. Yeah, we're ready. Anybody? Oh, 
We've I'm very good at so waiting good. in the silence no until question. somebody speaks. So <laughs> you're not going to get away with not asking a question. Um, to May, <laughs> what would be your top three highlights from the past six months of the program? So for me personally, I think that I have built so much confidence from joining the RISE group, basically. I've had so much kind of, uh, before I joined RISE, I was in a stressful position and I didn't know how to deal with it. And then I met some amazing groups of ladies and my mentor, Stephen, who was helping me to get through that part. And my outlook has totally changed. So the confidence, number one, because I'm able to feel like I can now tackle anything, basically. Um, number two, I would say was probably we went on a group rise retreat and we all spent a weekend together, including Stephen, who was the honorary lady there too. He joined yeah. the, uh, <laughs> the rise retreat and um, basically he was there with all of us and we were kind of sharing all of our experiences and we went up to kind of near Leicester and we were like having a wonderful kind of time all together and it wasn't about work it was about joining our bond so we're kind of now a massive friendship group which is like amazing it was what I joined Rise for I wanted to have more friends basically especially female friends in the industry and I think the other thing with kind of the Rise team number three would be that they're kind of always going to be your cheerleaders so when Rise ends for us our group doesn't end they'll always be there and like we do presentations for our lives and it's amazing because we know about each other then we, we get five minutes where we just talk about ourselves and all we do is just discuss what things have happened for us to get where we are where we want our future to be and in that some big moments are shared together and sometimes it can be really sad things like relatives passing away or it can be happy things, like someone getting a new job, someone getting a house, and we're all sharing that together. And I think that's really rare to have such a big group of people that both from a work environment can support each other, but also from a personality and like being able to speak to people on a personal level about other things in their lives. To get a mix of both of those things is so unique to Rise. So. Yeah. And are you going to yeah, mention the book you wrote, your headings <laughs> of your book? <laughs> <laughs> so Stephen set me a task, which was quite interesting. Um, but when we first joined Rise, he told me to think of like my life as book chapters and to write out the way that I see my life in the past, how I see it now, and going forward where I see it too. So because I work in live music, I famed mine all around the music industry and different album titles and kind of different like singles. Um, and it kind of shaped my life. So I was looking at it and being like, right, okay, this is when I enter the industry or before I enter the industry, this is where I am now. And then Stephen said, write the future. And at that point, that was when I kind of thought to myself, oh, okay, how, how can I make this book more interesting? <laughs> um, and then we kind of thought about it more from a serious view of, okay, so you've written that down as your book title, but how are you going to get there and do it? And that pushed me to actually then kind of in some ways change my job, get a promotion, move up. And it was all from an exercise of writing a book title because it made me focus on what I wanted, but in a way that was actually quite fun. And I want a signed first edition when you finish those <laughs> chapters. <laughs> did it, so where did that come from, that idea to do that, to it do just that came, exercise? It came a bit organically because yeah. May was so passionate about the music and the live event stuff. And then the way you described your life to me in the first instance, it, it was sort of broken down into chapter headings I know you didn't do it that way yeah. but it sort of just came organically so there's no one size fits all you weren't like you you didn't take out your your guidebook <laughs> your your rise mentor handbook and oh there's a good uh, idea yeah. <laughs> <laughs> another job for rise Carla now I think it would be really difficult actually obviously there's sort yeah. of um s things that need to be done from a more corporate point of view but I think if you did have a a handbook it would you'd lose some of the the personality around it because it is about um, matching when when people apply for to become a rise mentee it's not just you apply and you get it it's quite a process you have to win you have to win your menteeship and then the team Carla matches the mentors who volunteered with the mentees mm. so if there was a handbook 
I, I think that wouldn't work. You get a very yeah. sort of vanilla type of um, almost an online experience. Yeah. KPIs yeah. and stuff like that. Um, I, well, I think the other thing is that when you're in a work environment, it is all about kind of your targets and where you're aiming. And obviously, your bosses have your own personal targets for you. But Rise was about me. It wasn't about what my work wanted out of me. And it wasn't about what other people wanted. It was about what I wanted, which I think is quite like rare. Sometimes we're in the work, we're always about like, oh, well, we need to do this because the boss has told us to do this. But Rise was about myself, mm. and it was about how I get there, and I needed help to get there. And that's what Rise gave me. And like, it's one of those things where you could go internally to your boss and try and say to them, oh, I need this or I need that. But they might not even know what their own company offers. Mm. And at that point, Rise is there because it can help you get to those places. Some businesses are obviously really good and do offer that internally anyway. Um, and I think that's something that businesses do need to think about because we're in a position now where people are career driven and they do want to do better and they do want to work their way up the ranks and they do want to try and like, get more responsibilities. And how do we facilitate that? And some of that does come down to your boss, and some of that does come down to the business you're in and how they can move you upwards. And Rise just came at the perfect time for me and gave me a huge amount of confidence and contacts and all of those different things. And it was Stephen and also the group that I share with that helped all of that. So, Amazing. yeah. yeah. And the interesting thing is you, once you've got people up to a certain level, once they've been mentored, then what next? Because you get them excited, they get promoted, they get new roles. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that um, is on the agenda for Rise at some point soon is almost uh, the next level. How do you take these yeah. very successful women and prepare them for being um, in the C-suite or the sort of senior management? Well, I imagine there's also that, because you're talking about the sort of very, as with most industries, male-dominated industries. And so you probably run into this thing of like, well, all the jobs and the things to do in this industry are the things that the guys have been doing. So that's the way it's built. It's like you get to do what the guys have been doing. So, I mean, are, do, you, do you start to maybe get to this position of inventing something new that hasn't been what the guys have been doing, whatever that is. So you... You yeah, I can think start um, to move into uncharted territory and maybe invent your own path that hasn't been done. Yeah, before. definitely. I think a lot of the time, especially in the industry, there's kind of like this ladder, and it seems like everything should be linear, and that's, that's the way you go, and that's the way it's always been done. But like my journey's not been linear. When I graduated, I had no contacts, like many people don't. I didn't know how to get into the industry. And lots of people, when they leave uni, are quite lost because it's gone. All their support network has gone and the things they were doing to upgrade their technology knowledge and all those things, they're gone. They don't have the license for this bit of software anymore and they don't have that anymore. So it's kind of thinking about how do you encourage them to find their own path. When I got into TV, it was three years after I graduated and I'd worked normal jobs in between that time in the civil service just doing admin. And it was after that length of time I actually had the confidence to apply for work experience. And I was like, no, do you know what? I want to try and get in this industry. But from that, just me applying, I got it. I then got more work. And bit by bit, I stepped up through those ranks and then slightly moved over to live events, which is a bit of a different swing. So my career journey is very, like, unlinear. I haven't gone up the normal traditional ladders and I haven't aimed at certain roles. I've just kind of almost gone with the journey as well. Being very open to different opportunities, I think, is a bigger learning curve. Lots of people in uni are told, like, it's this way or no way. And actually, there's not. There's so many different opportunities you can go into the industry with. And actually, even from Rise, there's so many different roles I didn't even know existed. And then there's loads of people who are telling me about what they do. And that's so interesting because I didn't even know their job was like a thing but now I am and I'm learning about all these different roles and they're roles you don't get taught in uni and they're roles you don't get taught in a day-to-day -day basis because you don't see them they don't appear on the credits of a TV show um, and it's those roles that actually are really interesting because you don't see them a lot so obviously for the new people coming in I know with ours our student placement said the problem is is that there's no women in any of the technical lecture halls and I was like, oh, so what do you mean? And she was like, well, if I go in and do a technical placement with, for like, a project for like three months, my lecturer is a man. And I'm really technical, 
but I don't see myself represented. Mm. So it's like, how do we balance that for people who are coming in or in uni or in college to think that actually I can do what they're doing and they just need to see themselves doing that. And I think that's where we are. It's maybe finding your own path and being very open to the fact your path might have very different avenues off, but also finding a way that you're represented and you think then from seeing other people in strong positions that you want to be in, that you can do that too. And that goes across for diversity. It's not just with females. It's any type of diversity you have. People need to see themselves being represented in those fields. Yeah, it's a, a really important point. And diversity, I didn't go to university. You did go to university. But you don't need to have gone to university. So, and that, in a way, is almost... It, it changes the diversity it says a certain cohort of people go to university still. So if, you can get, if we can get people in the industry of any gender who haven't been to university, that naturally increases diversity in the widest sense. And that, you mentioned it, one of you mentioned it earlier, another thing that RISE does is the, the RISE Up Academy, which it talks to your point. So go into schools. And we've done everything from, I think we did eight, nine, ten-year-olds at one point, get them interested so that to your point about what is a broadcast engineer no one's at school when they're nine said i want to be a broadcast engineer you want to be a train driver or a vet or a doctor or a nurse or something so go in at that level help them understand and some of the feedback we get when we we go in and we give um kids a, a tv studio and a bunch of flight cases and some technical drawings we give them a five minute lesson on how telly works and then they build it they literally build this tv studio and then they record a quiz show and they do it faster than us. And they do it faster than <laughs> us. And the fun funniest thing of all, we, we were doing about four of these, and we, it becomes a bit formulaic. And we were doing one in the afternoon, so we thought, rather than waste time, we'd, we'd wire it up so that we could just do the session more quickly for the right. afternoon. And the lunch break was ending, and it was getting closer and closer, and nothing was working. And we were, everyone, and there was technical people there as well as me, so people who are camera supervisors and engineers, etc. And we couldn't make this work, and we were starting to think of a plan B. How are we going to do this afternoon? And one of the people from the morning, one of the sort of maybe 11 or 12-year-old girls came in and saw us all scratching our heads. And first thing she said, she looked over the back of the vision mixing desk and said, oh, that's different from this morning. <laughs> I was like, why? Why? What's different? Well, all those wires were in those sockets this morning. Now they're in those ones. So we plugged all the cameras into the outputs of the vision mixer, not the inputs. And it was an 11-year-old who came in and told us how we got it wrong. Yep. And that was, uh, that's not a made-up story, that is true. Uh, and so that was somehow quite liberating. It's like yeah. made them feel really good. And yeah, we felt a bit stupid, but we we're old enough and ugly enough to say, <laughs> hey, you got that right. right. It's, it's so um, yeah, when you're 11 years old, you can be a mentor. Yeah, well, I think we're all mentors. I think mm -hmm. whatever we do, everyone's a mentor. Eleven-year-old is probably a mentor to their eight-year-old brother or sister. Well, um, as, they, as they say, you know, with the, your your child is learning from you as a parent. You know, whether you're yeah. trying to teach them or not. So absolutely, and yeah. we have to to end here. So, do you want to, the last word? I was going to say that's exactly what happened to me. How I got into TV is that we um, back in Canada, my high school, we were doing a TV production, and because I'm cut quite chatty and doing improv they, they put me as the the host and I hated that I didn't want to do that <laughs> but the part that was really interesting is when they got all of the road cases and then starting to just like cable things and I spent like the day not rehearsing at all for what I was going to say during the, sh the TV show and then just looking at the wires asking questions and my teacher saw that and she said I think you should visit a TV station maybe this is what you should do because I didn't know what I was wanted to do in life so exactly that opportunity now just to see that they, they completely put me in something else because it's like oh you're chatty you're just gonna be the host and couldn't <laughs> couldn't do a good job it was horrible but out of that horrible experience hosting a tv show for the local community channel um then i i got the idea to go into broadcasting and, and then television so that it does work you just yeah. need to bring it to the people and then broaden the horizon and it's those tiny moments can make yep. a huge difference in people. Anyway, thank you so much. Um, join me in thanking our guests.